Hello and welcome to my All Top 5's Mars Double episode special in light of my 2000 subscribers and my 20th video, Milestones. In the other video released with this one, I have a quick look at some of the strange photos returned from the surface of Mars by the space rovers sent by NASA. In this video, however, I'm looking a little bit deeper. Life on Mars has been a popular subject for decades. Because Mars is the most similar planet to Earth in a lot of ways, it's long been speculated that it could support life, or could have supported life a long time ago. Could living organisms, however small, be there on Mars today? Is there any proof of life long ago buried in the rocks? We don't have a definite answer, but there's a lot of evidence that could hint towards a yes. Number 5. Simulated Martian Environment while this definitely isn't proof of life on Mars, this is evidence that life could survive on the planet. In 2012, an experiment was set up to test the ability of a particularly tough and adaptable lichen, known as an extremophile, to survive in a Mars-like environment. This was carried out in the Mars Simulation Laboratory, owned by German Aerospace Center. The experiment had some surprise findings. Over 34 days, the conditions were simulated, including low temperature, low pressure, and changes in UV light intensity. The lichen showed some incredible adaptations very quickly, and continued to photosynthesize throughout the process, showing that it could certainly deal with a Mars-like environment. Despite this exciting outcome, scientists remain fairly unfazed, and say that a lot more testing is needed. This is because the ability of the lichen to continue living over 34 days isn't quite the same as a similar extremophile actually on Mars, developing, reproducing, growing and evolving. It's a fair point, so we shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves with excitement, but it definitely paves the way to interesting future study. Number 4. Water. All life we know about cannot survive or begin without liquid water involved in the process somewhere. That's why scientists have made the search for water one of the highest priorities on each of the missions to Mars. As the Red Planet is so cold and has such a low atmospheric pressure, it means that virtually all the water there is solid ice, although there is a small amount of water vapour in the air. We've known for a long time that Mars has ice caps at each of its poles, much like the Earth has. During the warm seasons, the poles melt to some extent, and this is thought to cause some water to flow on the surface for short periods at a time. However, it's believed that this freezes very, very quickly, probably only a few minutes after melting. These images don't necessarily prove that water is making these streaks, however, as some suggest it could just be sand flowing across the surface instead. There's no way of proving it currently. There are thought to be geysers on Mars as well, and scientists have studied their behaviour, finding some odd dark spots and channels in the ice at the southern pole. Some believe that these dark spots could be colonies of microbes that work like tiny plant life, using photosynthesis to survive. Each summer, the theory is that the sun melts a little bit of ice, forming these channels of liquid water. The microorganisms come out of hibernation and thrive for a few months at a time, their activity causing small pockets to melt in the surface ice. This is the theoretical explanation for these dark spots. This location would also be one of the best for avoiding the high solar radiation that's apparent on the surface. Again though, this is all conjecture, based on what we can see. There are other geological explanations that are just as likely, and so sadly we can't say for certain that this is proof of life on Mars. Number 3. Chemical Environment One of the best ways to determine if there's any point in looking for life on Mars is to see how habitable it is, that is, how well it could potentially sustain life given its environment. Many of the missions to the Red Planet have included a specialist part of the vehicle that can give a very clear picture of what the air and soil are made up of, in terms of the elements involved. Aside from water being present, as I've mentioned, there is an availability of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus and sulphur, along with other nutrients and micronutrients that could support life. Although on Mars's surface there's too much radiation and it's too cold for life as we know it to survive, there may well be merit in the idea that underground caves and ancient vent systems might be a better environment. Indeed, there was believed to have been a lot of volcanic activity in millions of years gone by. If the elements and nutrients that are apparent on the surface are also in the subterranean areas, there may be more chance for life down there. These elements are the most fundamentally important building blocks of life, so the fact that they're present and in good number means that the idea of Martian life can't be written off quite so easily. 
Number two, meteorites. Now, from the vague to the more specific, debris from all over space bombards the Earth's atmosphere on a daily basis. The vast majority of this debris is dust that burns high above the Earth's surface, sometimes causing the phenomenon of shooting stars. When it's a rock or something much bigger or tougher, sometimes the object will make it through our atmosphere and actually land on our planet's surface. At this point it's called a meteorite. We've discovered thousands upon thousands of these rocks from outer space, and NASA has 34 that it has identified as coming from Mars itself. How? Well, whenever Mars is hit by a meteor, or when volcanoes erupted long ago, some of the material that has been blown away from the planet's surface to make a crater can end up leaving Mars's thin atmosphere. The rock then travels through space and, by chance, enters Earth's orbit and crash lands. We can tell it's a Martian rock because its composition matches several signatures that have been measured by spacecraft and rovers analysing Mars's atmosphere and composition. Out of these 34 meteorites, there are a few that may show signs of ancient life. The most significant was estimated to have left Mars 16 million years ago, and hit the Earth only 13,000 years ago. This particular meteorite suggests two important things. Groundwater may have been present around 4 billion years ago on Mars, from the way the cracks in the rock have certain materials and certain formations inside them. Most importantly, there are tiny tube and oval structures inside the material within these cracks that some scientists have suggested are fossils of nanobacteria. The structures are allegedly too small to have been made by Earth bacteria, so could these be elusive, ancient nanobacteria that once lived in the waters of Mars? A more recent study suggests a different, non-biological explanation that may overthrow this, but again, more tests are needed. Number 1. Methane In 2004, it was confirmed that there were traces of methane in Mars's atmosphere, which made a lot of scientists very, very curious. Because methane doesn't last very long by itself in the atmosphere, the fact that one of our probes detected it means that there has to be something continuously creating the methane. Two other potential explanations are volcanic activity and living organisms. Although there has been volcanic activity long in Mars's past, there is none currently, making this explanation almost null. So it's over to the possibility that some kind of life could be creating this methane on Mars. There are some microorganisms called methanogens that, theoretically, have all the adaptations and processes that would allow them to live below the surface of Mars, as they don't need the sun and use only hydrogen and carbon dioxide to live. Some experiments done in laboratories have confirmed that this is the case, and that methanogens producing the methane shouldn't be ruled out as an explanation. The Curiosity rover cast some doubt on this in 2013 by returning a reading of no methane in the atmosphere at its landing site. However, a few months later it detected a spike of methane ten times what was expected, suggesting that the gas is released in intervals, perhaps with the changing of the seasons. This certainly goes hand in hand with the idea of hibernating bacteria underground beginning its activity when the sun begins to warm it. India's Mars Orbiter mission and Europe and Russia's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter are planned to give us more analysis and details of the methane in the atmosphere of Mars, perhaps as soon as in the next couple of years. So watch this space. And that's it from All Top 5s for this week. So what do you believe? Do you think that there are organisms living 140 million miles away on the planet's surface? Do you think there ever were in the past? I definitely believe there has to be life somewhere in the universe, but I'm unsure whether we'd be so lucky to find it so relatively close to home. As always, when you're discussing things in the comments below, just make sure you're careful and considerate and respectful of others. You can always click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video, and all my others of course, and it helps people find them a little bit easier. You can subscribe for a new video every single Tuesday, and I leave you with another message of peace and love to each and every one of you, and I will see you all next time on All Top Fives.